Hi guys, today I am talking about distributor maintenance. Yep, boring topic, major yawn, but there's a couple of things I didn't know about for, for many years, and the chances are you may not know either. Let's do it. Now, I'll be the first to admit I am guilty of not maintaining my distributors in air-cooled motors. I kind of put them in and forget about them. Unless something's going wrong or the points are closing or I'm doing timing, I don't often go back to it. I just, just don't. And you'd be kind of forgiven for thinking there's nothing to do if you've got such as a Haynes manual. So if you look at the front page and the first page on there, routine maintenance, there's no mention of distributors or anything you have to do as part of the service there. Um, and there are actually a few things you should be doing. So most of what we're going to talk about today is pretty obvious stuff anyway, so as you're doing your timing, your, your point scap and stuff like that, so some of this will get done as part of other routine jobs. Um, however, I say a couple of things I didn't know about, and I actually learnt it through the Volkzone forum. Um, Volkzone's got a technical help section on there for the air cool guys, um, and there's a, a few really knowledgeable people on there that help everyone out when they have problems, basically. Um, so I'd like to thank those guys for um, that information I, I found on that group um, a couple of years ago and I'd also like to thank Ben for the picture we're going to be using today. All right, so let's take our dizzy apart. The particular one's a 009, which is relevant for any with points. So we have our points, uh, the open and close, we've got the, the breaker points at the end there. Uh, and on that breaker point you can actually get a build up of residue. Um, or in extreme cases, um, actually erodes away a little bit at the face of the oh, where it contacts. So it's going to wedge it open. A little bit of emery paper, fine emery paper, and just give it a little clean. If you can see anything in there, like I have, look, got a little bit of build up on there. Uh, you just want to get rid of that. So be very, very gentle. It's going to cause any damage. You just try and clean any, any of that residue away. So it maintains a good spark. And an even gap. I'm not going to do a video today on setting the points gap or uh, using the dwell angle, but let's say I'm hoping to do a video later in the year with a friend uh, where we're going to do a complete engine setup, so uh, watch out for that one. Now, the first thing I didn't really know about was the little pad here. So there's a little pad in between the shaft and the points. So if I just open it up, you can see a little block there in between, just in front of the screwdriver. Um, and that needs to be lubricated. Um, so you need multi-purpose grease or just general grease um, and pretty much anything will do. Um, a little bit on your finger um, and just wipe it around the shaft here. So probably clean it off first if you can do. Uh, give it a good clean and then fresh grease. You'll need a very, very small amount. Um, it's, it's hard to get grease to the pad itself directly because of where it is, but a bit of the shaft. And when it spins around, um, it'll keep that lubricated um, so it's um, floating freely. Now the next one was something that I didn't know about either. Um, now in the end of here you'll see there is nothing. So in the middle of the shaft here there should be a blob of felt or a felt pad. Um, now if I just get another dizzy. This particular one is from a CT, so it's a late one with no points. However in the end of here look is a felt pad. I checked the one on my engine over here and this one has a felt pad. It sits in a slightly different place but it's in there. And if I check on this one, this is also a 009 and this has got the felt pad in the middle too. So in the centre of all these distributors, any that's got a mechanical advance, so that's basically all of them, so it's the SVDAs, 009s, even this one which is a late CT one that doesn't have the points, um, you'll find these felt pads and that basically helps lubricate the mechanical advance um, and below in the shaft. Um, you don't need it if it's a very early um, vacuum advance only distributor but they say they're few and far between these days. And basically when you do your engine service um, every 6,000 miles or whatever it may be, 12,000 miles, um, you want to be adding two or three drops of engine oil to this little pad just to keep things lubricated. If anybody's wondering why I had this fitted on one of my 009s, basically it's a rev limiting um, rotor from a, originally a T25 engine I believe. Uh, it mechanically um, restricts the revs to 5400 RPM and if your engine is capable of spinning up to and past that um, but you don't want to do it on a regular basis and, or not on the street, this is when I used it, um, it's a handy way of stopping yourself from blowing your engine up. So we've done our points breaker, we've done our contact surface. Uh, if it's got one, it should have. Uh, your felt pad is going to get a bit of oil in there. 
put it all back together again. Now, the next one's a little bit more obvious. Here's the end of your rotor. So these, over time, again, they get a build up on here. You know, like this one, it's got a build up on that, in fact. Again, just a bit of emery paper, give it a clean. Don't go too wild. All you want it to do is build nice and shiny again. Get any crap off, like so. And also you want to make sure you've got a good clean surface on the top there uh, for the carbon electrode. A little clean, nice and shiny. Uh, and make sure it's not too heavily worn. And the last obvious one is the cap. So same goes as for the, the rotor really. So you can see on there possibly um, there's a build up uh, on those little electrode points. So get your emery cloth and just give them a good old clean. Um, you'll notice over time, uh, if it's been on there for a long time, they'll actually start to erode and concave and there'll not be a flat surface anymore. If it gets to that point, it's not worth keeping, just replace them for, for what it costs. Um, let's say, it just takes a minute just to clean them, get any, uh, any carbon stuff off there and uh, they should be good to go again. Uh, make sure your little uh, carbon electrode in the middle there is good condition, the spring's not jammed up or anything. Um, but yeah. Another obvious one, but for the sake of a second, just check your wiring. Um, so your condenser wiring, this was actually attached loosely when we started this video and it's actually fallen off during the process. Um, so they can fatigue and fray and with age they go hard and brittle and can break off easily. Um, also when you fit in the, the block into the housing here, um, these can damage quite easily if you're a bit clumsy or fit it the wrong way around. Uh, so just be careful with that because the last thing you want to do is have these wires shorting out on the body of the distributor. It's going to cause you no end of trouble. The last thing I want to mention is the general condition of your cap. Now these Bakelite caps over time can actually develop hairline cracks in them. Um, it's not overly obvious, you can't see them, it's kind of invisible to the naked eye sort of thing. Um, what happens is when you get a, a damp or humid day, um, you can get a build up of moisture inside the crack. Um, and what happens then is your spark can track down that rather than go into the electrode it needs to go to. Um, so basically you end up with poor running or misfiring, especially intermittent issues in damp days. Well, that could be your reason. Um, so for the sake of a few quid, just replace it. So I replace it every few years, that's my recommendation, just to make sure they're in good shape. Um, they're not expensive especially, and they still seem to be decent quality these days, so they've not gone down in quality too badly. Um, you used to see lots of these back in the day, um, and they got quite a bad rap online. Um, so everyone used to say that the, the terrible they cause running problems. I personally have never known anyone with bad running problems caused by one of these, at least that we know of. Um, but I've always personally just stuck to the Bakelite ones um, and they've always done me good service. So I hope that helps guys. Cheers, take care, bye bye.